What's up, y'all? It's me, Tasha C. In this particular video, y'all will be reviewing If Loving You Is Wrong, Season 4, Episode 5 Review. And shout out to my YouTube fam. And if you're not ready to don't forget to go ahead and just subscribe. You know, it won't cost nothing, nothing. You know, I hope not. That's your YouTube red or whatever. But anyway, but shout out, like I said, yeah, yeah, I'll shout out again. Thank you for all the love support. You know, I'm coming back after during the three months and a half. And, um, you know, it was good to be back. I'm, you know, I'm putting my pink, I'm sticking my pinky toe inside, the, you know, side of the water. So, you know, before I step all night in, but even though I can't swim worth a damn, but, you know, I'm just putting my pinky toe and dipping in, you know, dipping in the pool a little bit, the kiddie pool, you know. So, I'll get back to these reviews. But hopefully, I won't be back consistent because I miss you, miss y'all. I miss, love y'all. But anyway, y'all, very interesting episode. Um, we back outside. Uh, y'all don't go particular or nothing like that. But it's interesting how... No offense for Miss Louise, please get a stitch of cord for your son. Pimp backhand slap to the face, whatever. Because I understand your son, but it's just like he just keeps trying and he thinks he can't be touched because, you know, he, you know, went, you know, got his little license and got his little degrees in psychology, psychiatry somewhere, and think he can't be touched. And, you know, she always been through before. I wonder what they ever bring up or. You know, I, I honestly, I don't watch every e episode, but I kind of wonder, like, remember she said he got a sibling, Randall got a sibling too, would they bring it up? And I'm just going to put it out there, like, this questionable system I'm going to bring up a little bit later in the review. Okay. But anyway, y'all, and who I might think it is, I'm just guessing, I don't know. <laughs> but y'all put comments. But anyway, y'all, we back to Randall's, like, he got them papers to serve. Brad opens up the, uh, the paper, uh, uh, Pandora's box, basically, even though Marcy tried to warn him about serving the papers with, um, saying he's serving to, get, you know, get the custody of, the, of his son. And, you know, like I said, Randall is just being so tough with his words. He basically is, like, letting Brad know, like, you know, and he goes, Miss Louis, like, no, don't touch my son, and blah, 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 no, blah, 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 and blah, blah. He basically, like, Randall's like, yeah, I live better, you know, uh. Better than you hitting me and the birds is the taste of your wife and blah blah blah. And the funny part is it's like Alex has not been fucking with him for a minute. And he continues to sit here and push buttons and he's even asking, Are y'all two living together? Blah blah blah. Randall doesn't seem to know or seem to think that acts like as if he actually should be you know, he's acting like um he morally has right to did what he did and Marcy's not supposed to get nobody's supposed to be mad about what the fuck he did. That that's the point is like he's invincible and can't be touched and you know he holds no accountability to his actions, okay? I don't know who to get rid of first. Now, Eddie or Randall. How about we take a poll? Or, you know, Ty. But I'm just saying is the way Randall's put Eddie, I kinda got used to him. We gotta get you know, he gotta be in the hospital bed one day again, if you know what I mean. But uh um but was he not uh, you, you, yeah, you know, but you know, wasn't he yeah, um, there for only barely a second to check this stuff out, but yeah, he, he trying it too again, but it's just been random with this junk, like, you know, maybe he can, you know, go out first, but you know, when the actor the place, Randall, the way Randall be talking stuff reminds me of the Old Spice commercial, you know, look at me, now look at the horse, look at me, and look at the horse, now look back at me, <laughs> but he's, you know, even going as far as, like I said, talking smack to Brad. And Brad basically, in the end, goes there when they go back and forth. But Brad almost got him, you know, uh, got him a little bit. But then it got it got stopped. You know, like I said, Miss Weedy Stairs refused to, you know, move out way of her son. And he's like, you know, move, get out of the way, Miss Louise, basically, because I'm about to go handle him. But that didn't happen. He goes to get the paper, you know, knock on Kelly's door. Because, you know, Alice is still in there with the child, or, you know, his stepson. Um, yeah. And, you know, they're two kids. And, you know, um, she ends up calling. He kept banging the door. He was like, Kelly, please, just tell Alex to basically, you know, like, open up the door. I have to give her something. That not. But, you know, with Brad's behavior, and, you know, recently, it, um, even though, uh, um, he apologized and everything, um, I think, um, uh, eventually, um, like, you know, from afar, is still cautious. So, Ramon, that's, that's the man's name, you know, Mr. Sacred Chocolate, um, come, you know, she's mowing the lawn, she asks him to come there, and he's like this, you know, basically comes to, uh, Kelly's out of company backyard, I think, at the time. And he's like, t you know, she's like letting Brad know, like, you know, you don't want to do this. And it was like, the five minutes were stretching to 35 minutes, because it's like, 
here come the kids eventually come out the room um and then she's alex and then he's and here the kids ask him like uh dad what's wrong you mad at us he's like no and you know i think it was the son or the other or the little girl but if someone's like no he ain't mad at us he he mad at mom because of her affair and he's like what and they let him know like that and she told us and uh and I think the little girl was like, oh, is y'all getting divorced? And he like, yeah, we are. And But still, he has got a chance to tell them about this paper being served to them to try to get custody of some whatever, um, you know, of Alex and Randall's son. Okay. So he's trying to let them know, like, you know, like I said, because he, he's telling them, but it was a slow process because here go Kelly. He don't want to do this in front of the kids. And here's Ramon, uh, Ramon, Ramon, like, kind of like a, Raymond Ramon, Mr. R, we're going to call him moment things. Too many, you know, his name is very close to Randall's, right? But he's basically let him know, like, you know, you don't want to do this again. Are we trying to skin? He was like, yeah, I'm trying to give the paper. He wasn't mad or anything as far as, like, even besides being a door. Um, Brad's demeanor was actually very pleasant, okay? But he's, like, basically, like, slowly telling him. He could have just, because he's, like, he didn't want to tell nobody first what it was without giving the Alex the paper. And it's like... And then they got nerves on that. I'm just letting y'all know in advance. The nerves and audacity, d damn you, burst, had the nerves to have a damn glitch. So right before he's about to tell them that the paper was, next minute I know, I see Kelly about to go. And so you're going to have to go to Ashley Little, they, uh, uh, YouTube cousin, Lady Eagles of You, also my YouTube slash so sister cousin, na uh, Natural Posters TV, who uh, put it as well. And of course, um, I think also the, uh, the ghetto view, because, uh, uh, Miss Nika's, well, Miss Nika as well, um, review, those viewers reviews on here, but yeah, you're gonna have to go to those people to get that little party in, because, like I said, I had a glitch the next minute, I seen Kelly, you know, Mr. R holding her back from Randall, because he all talking about, what, is this your new boyfriend now, you gonna buy another house and try to trap, blah, 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 what, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, is somebody get Randall, okay, throw the Bible at his head, something, just something, just somebody get him, please and they're holding her kelly's being held back by mr r and she's like you're crazy he's like i just want to see my son but that's how louise, louise was on the other side of him or something like that but she wasn't in his way but he's like, i want to see my son i want to see my son <sighs> alex comes out and she comes in there and he didn't expect her response she's like you know forget this i'm tired of hiding in the bushes and stuff and she was like this um, she smacked him a couple times, looked like she tried to knee his balls, and then she's like this, you know what, I don't, you know, basically I forget you, I'll do anything, you keep playing with me, I'm gonna show you, you're not gonna have custody of my, of my son, that is my child, that is my child, you keep playing me, watch what happened, okay, I have, you know who all my friends are, okay, they're all minorities, okay, so don't sit here and play with me, okay, just because I'm a little, a little, a little, a little nice little kid, Caucasian lady, don't play with me, but I mean, it's just her demeanor, you could tell, is was not the same she was like you're not your plan because he's just like you know acting like what that's our son you know that's my son too blah 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 but he was more so quiet he didn't talk all that smack he was doing when he was talking smack to base it down to marcy brad and kelly whatever you know right and um you know mr r i think a little bit mr r but i'm saying he just kept trying it but when Alex came in, basically, you no, know, but he's like this, you know, basically like, you know, you won't see, you won't see the last, this ain't the last of me, okay, that's what he was giving us, but yeah, she went back in the house, and, you know, she lay down, uh, lay down, sleep, but, but you know, it kind of ended, he ended up walking back with Miss Louise, uh, back to the house, I think, whatever, but it kind of like ended, but he got mad, though, because he gonna kick, you know, one of the little scrubs down, um, when he got off of uh, Kelly's grass, I'm, you know, just, just all on Kelly's grass, whatever, and just gonna kick it, like, you know, like, I bet you wouldn't kick none, you know, none of the dudes, you, women, you know, kept trying it, but anyways, she's laying in the bed, and, and Mr. R, and Kelly talk for a minute, and she's doing, she's doing, um, you know, um, like, she wanted to say something, but didn't want to say something, Mr. R tried to ask her, Basically, like, you know, like, what was the story to my he bought? She bought a house and you were treating with this boyfriend. And she explains about Travis. She thought they were going to get married because he said he wanted something to tell her when he got back. And they were going to get for a while. And she finds out when he gets back, of course, that he just wanted to be friends. Really friends with benefits, really. And now since, you know, either so guilt, the guilt or whatever it was, remember, he was trying to get back. So I don't know if we'll see Travis again or what's going to happen between Mr. R or him R. And he basically was letting it be known, like, oh, really? Well, he be, he's worried about the breast milk instead of the breast. 
you know, basically calling him like, you know, that, you know, the level mama's boy, you know, like the immaturity, he's boy, you know, the immaturity level, uh, you know, uh, you know, like basically Justice and Travis may be cool for more than one reason. Uh, uh, I mean, her, her and her son because they're on the same level as far as maturity wise. Like, you need a man, Kelly. You don't need a boy is what he was basically breaking it down to her. And she's just, oh, you know, I feel safe with you. And, you know, they about to kiss, and then she hears some keys, um, some keys, uh, keys jingle. I don't know if she thought that uh, Travis was about to come through the door or whatever, because even I was confused. Like, what it? About to, like, they about to open up the door or something. Because I don't, did she give him a key? Did she give her a Travis key? Because I thought every time he had to knock, knock to get in there, so I don't know. But, he was like, that's my keys, and basically, like, okay, he might as well go, because first she was telling him he need to get a shower, because he got all that sweat on him and you know she ain't trying to get all the spunk on this cover you know uh, uh the, you know on you know uh you know on the uh, cover of anything even on the couch does she have a cover on the couch that's irrelevant but okay so you know alex come came in a little bit towards right before they were about to kiss and it got stalled and she even said you know like oh i see what's going on here but i feel like alex you could have stayed in there because when they were in there, like, don't not don't cock block whatever, right? Then you didn't get cock blocked. You got a baby out of it, okay? Even if it was, you know, some trickery involved, okay? So just don't 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 ruin Kelly, you know, moment, okay? <laughs> but anyway, she basically was talking a little bit, and they just Alex realized she has no strength. She wants to go back home, and then Kelly's first was trying to have her stay over there. And Alex is like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to take me and my babies home. I'm right next door, literally. So Kelly's like, let's get a slumber party and have all the kids. You know, so they agree to that. You know, or Kelly made Alex agree to it. Kelly ends up talking to Essie. And, you know, like, Essie feels some type of way really about Claudia. Really because... Eddie is trying to holler at her. Not really because performance is more so because of that. Even though Claudia is not trying to holler at him. Blah, blah, blah. Because, but no, no, no. Essie first ends up calling. No, no, no. Not Kelly. Wrong, wrong chick. Natalie. Natalie calls for a solution saying, you know, she has this package here. And she puts it up with, you know, the brown paper bag. Then she called Lucy side and washed out your dirty drawers. The detergent the sink and everything. Um, and I'll be, you know, so I'll be waiting for you to get back, boo. And call me back. And like I said, Essie's talking to Natalie, talking about how now son her Lucius and Eddie are not driving again because I think Natalie had asked that. But she's like trying to get rid of Claudia. It, um, the um, I think it was brought about the Claudia chick through Natalie. And then Essie's like, I'm trying to get fired, but it's like it's not really for work. I think it's just as a cover up. And she's really just wanting to get rid of her because of really how the way she looks and how Eddie's paying attention to it. Okay. Even though she just got seen Eddie last week screwing abroad, literally caught in and seen him all everything out balls out and everything with some chick and uh and it just seems like she keeps tuning out and hoping something would happen uh, uh happen better and it's like you know hey, that's not the man he used to be you see you use past tense not present tense okay for a reason okay it only getting worse all right. And he just continued what he been doing for, for as long as the show been on and before that. So, anyways, she's trying to look up information with Carter because Nags like he, you know, she was trying to give Lucius some number, blah blah blah. She goes, Essie goes to call, you know, her former employer, and they obviously don't know who she was. And she wants to go talk to Lucius and ask about, you know, let it be known, like, you know, what about this Claudia person you gave number? He was, he was like, it's nothing. Um, going on between it, that that's nothing and then he was caught on that she was you know like he asked like are you trying to buy her she like yeah i am she doesn't know how to do anything she's endangering the cause and he's basically going as far as like making the same like no she probably just wants to stop to give her a chance you need to give her a fair chance are you sure you're being fair and he's basically in the end said he was going to look into it and he called somebody he's like yeah somebody named let somebody named star ll because they, the first and last name were L's, and he gave it five, seven, seven, six, eight, eight. Yeah, 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 in the code. Now, let's go to another scene, because I don't think we bring up Lucius, whatever, again. Now, we have this Julius situation, Julius situation, goes to see his daddy, right? There's a there's a lady in there named Akila, something like that, right? I'm probably saying, like, Akila, 
the key why am i saying that tila okay and because he's just like who is this in the room with a dad and it could have been one of those things because she was black. He was secretly in love with her, even though he was married to her mom. Because he's like, go ahead and tell her. First, she was about to leave. I'm like, I'm out of this. And he's like, go tell her. My name's Tilla. And he's like, here go to dad. Taking his oxygen mask off. Like, go ahead, keep talking. I'm, I'm, uh, um, you know, that we've been secret in love. And then, you know, dad kind of reminds like, you have a sister. He talked a little bit. And basically, letting Julius know that I've been loving this woman for 30 years. And that's what I'm saying is, is that maybe because it was a race issue or something, why maybe that's why he never went with or ended up with him. Or, you know, she just like was the loyal, you know, um, a side chick or mistress, you know, whatever, you know. But they have, he has an older sister, right, that's older than, than him, than Julius. And then I had to think about it is, I'm like, hmm, do we know much about Kelly? I'm just saying, who is this mystery sister? Did have they shown her yet? Is that, pl I, I'm just saying, hmm, mysteriously. Where is, who is this sister? But apparently her brother, he knows because that's Quan's sister. But have they shown Quan's sister yet? I don't think they have. And shout out to the actor that plays Quan because when I used to review the show with his past season a couple times, he was retweeting it. So shout out to you, bro. <laughs> but anyways, so Julie's like, okay, who the heck is that? Who the heck, son? But, you know, he was just getting Max Burcher trying to get the lady to come outside. We already know that was not going to problem. And Dad's like, no, bro. If you can't talk to her here, you're not talking to her, period. But, you know, it was interesting considering that he's a boss and he, you know, you know, one, you know, uh, got all this power, you know, whatever. I'm surprised he didn't have no like security guards, like in front of the door. I hadn't seen no security guards, not you know, not one person with the glasses in the background be like this and stuff with you know, with the um, the muscle, the black muscle shirt on. No, no, just nothing. But basically, um, he let Julius know because he's like, Julius, I'm sick and tired of you. Basically, you keep it on. I'll give everything to her, and. And to your sister, because it's like you not sitting up here and doing what you're supposed to do. You know, I know you had something to do with why how Eddie and you shout out the whole burger joint stuff like Julie's like, huh? You know, not try, trying to not whatever, but because you don't hear nurses say when she, it was brought up that that his sister is Quan's sister. You know, he's like, oh, that low life drug dealer. She's like, what? You when well, you a high life drug dealer? And when they went into the alleyway, I first thought it was going to be real bad. But, you know, she, I don't know. But she obviously ain't somebody to play, be played with neither, okay? Her Michael Kors purse looked real. So, anyway, so, um, and she might have a designer knife or, you know, or that nice, you know, brass knuckles with a knife in. We don't know. But when he went in there and basically, um, like, who are you or something like that or trying to ask more information, I just told you who I was. You know, I'm Rick James, bitch. I mean, basically, she just let it be known, like... Uh, I don't know, mommy, you, you don't want to play with me like that, okay? I can show you better than I can tell you, okay? And she just walked out of there like it was nothing. He didn't touch her. He didn't even breathe on one strand of her hair, okay? That's how it was. Like, she let me know, like, you want to play with me, won't you? I can show you, okay? Keep trying me. And he kind of just left it alone. And that is that scene, okay? Now, like I said, towards the end... We're going to go, because it, I mean, it was a lot going on in this episode. The last little part we're going to talk about is Pete. Come on, let's work it for Pete. Okay, Pete is still, you know, in a coma or whatever. But he's still supposed to do Tina, who I remember, I think, was the nurse, I think, on the ship. Well, she's a nurse or a doctor, but she worked on the ship when, you know, when Ben was in the hospital, when he just lost his hand due to Eddie. And Andrew was there. And he was wondering, like, well, who going to be the police officer and blah, 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 and she's concerned, whatever. And Tina was like, what's wrong? You know, what's going on? He was trying to ask a certain information, and she was like, you know, I can lose my job. But he's like, we know each other. Come on. You can talk to me, whatever, right? Okay. Uh, we go to Chipotle <laughs> occasionally, which I don't know if they're going to do it. But you know, I I'm just adding in some stuff. But it's like, you know, they're cool. So she lets me know that Ben is drug because he was like a drug addict. And she was like, yeah, he kept on trying to ask for all this pain medication you know, passes. So she was like, he basically the druggie, okay? He pill popper. And she, when she found out that he's supposed to be the officer, when she asked, like, who's supposed to be the police officer watching him? And she was already concerned about that. But she obviously never have seen Eddie or don't really too much know who the hell Eddie is. So later on in the episode, um, they got where, uh, where Eddie's there and he's talking to Ben. And Ben is, you know, sitting here like this, all annoyed and stuff. And then Eddie's basically like, you got to take him out. 
So he gives him probably his poison, you know, poisonous needle, whatever, or what, you know, baby, or whatever the heck they're trying to put in the IV, you know, to take care of uh, uh, Pete. Because, you know, there's concern about when Pete comes through, how much Eddie and all of them going to get in trouble, whatever, if Pete lives. Which is kind of interesting because it seemed like as if the person who's even over, you know, the lead detective, you know, or the sergeant, whatever, um, he was the one who sent Pete. On this, so he a dirty cop too, ain't he? You know, he sent Pete over there with no, you know, no, uh, um, on a bicycle, on a swing, you know, on a little, his little brother swing type of thing by himself there and there with, you know, with no, um, bulletproof vest or anything, okay? So, all of a sudden, um, he gives him the needle at the end. The girl was looking, you know, Nurse Tina was looking kind of there, but she didn't kind of look until after. He goes into the room, right, and then she picks up the phone, and then she's like, uh, Andrew, I'm, you need to come down here, something, something ain't right, there's some guy out here, I don't know, that's sitting out here, and Ben is going near the bed, so we're gonna see if Pete gonna make it, or he's just gonna sit there, what's gonna happen, because we see Ben, because Eddie's basically giving the order, you better do this, blah, 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 and he's about to so close that he's going near Pete with this poisonous needle into the IV to get rid of him and it ends right there in the episode uh, at that moment. I think I covered everything. That's uh, what stood out to me. But anyway, y'all pleasant we pleasant night pleasant weekend hugs and loves I definitely see you next video. Y'all it's good to be back. Sorry if I missed anything but that's what had kind of stood out whatever. Like I said, you know, Julie's gonna see Randall next week, all that other good stuff or whatever. And now he's gonna talk to Lucia Lucia said everything gonna go down and what's gonna happen to Pete? Is Pete gonna make it? Is Pete gonna make it? Okay, and it's been gonna be stopped. Okay, like you know, don't use your good hand to put poison in people's hands, whatever, right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, whatever. But we'll see next next episode. All right, love y'all. Take care.